gonna do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. When the only people that existed were troglodytes. Cave men. Cave women. Neanderthal. Troglodytes. So anyway, for those of you that don't recognize where these words are from, go look up the song Troglodyte by Jimmy Castor Bunch. It's from the early 70s, and it's actually a pretty fun song. It even spun off some other ones like Bertha Butt and the Bertha Butt Boogie and on and on. Go look them up. Anyway, since I'm starting to get flack about being older than dirt and all that kind of stuff, especially from the youngsters these days, I decided to get a copy of the first model I ever built back when, I, don't know, I guess I was eight years old, and build it again, hopefully better than I did when I was eight years old, which was, um, if I remember, it was a, look back, it was a total glue bomb. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll do a better job on it this time. Uh, actually, my parents had a car just like this when I was a kid. Okay, so I might be stretching the truth just a little bit. But anyway, uh, this is the Lindbergh 125 scale Flintmobile. Um, I thought it'd be a quick, it's a snap tight. I thought it'd be a fun, quick build. Uh, I already started it before I decided I was going to be making videos of this stuff. So it's about half done already. Um, what I did do already is I pre-assembled these assemblies. And although it's snap tight, I did glue all this stuff together. And I have started painting already. And as you can see, move this out of the way. There, There's these pieces that I've already done. Uh, there's the roof. And as you can tell, I've already been like weathering and, and whatnot, trying to make it look a little more real. It is a cartoon, so these I painted kind of a, tried to go with a granite color. Uh, the wheels, you can see that, hopefully it'll focus. Oops, I'll dump it there. I'm hoping that shows up all right. And there was just some little other little pieces cross pieces and steering wheel and the seats these are the seats which I haven't finished I started on the one I'm not sure I like what I'm doing there but anyway it's all part of the painting process I jumped ahead of myself and I usually prime everything normally I use a primer from you know uh, Krylon plastic coat um, Rust-Oleum, one of those three usually. And when I started to wash these, I was trying to... I kind of went backwards. I decided I was going to start washing these to get some dark down in all the grooves. And when I did, these are all craft paints. And you thin them down. You know, it's like folk art. And deco art and craft smart and any of those these are ones you get Hobby Lobby and Michaels are pretty cheap and I thin them with uh, you can thin them with water I use um, automotive washer fluid so let me reach across here I keep a, some of it in these little bottles it's easier to handle just the blue. The blue, when it dries, it's not there. So you never see the blue that's in it, the blue dye. But anyway, I was doing some wash, and I thinned it out with, with that. And because I didn't prime it first, the paint started coming right off the plastic. So I had to stop. I went over what I already did and uh, sprayed it with a, a matte clear acrylic. Um, this is the one I have right now. It's Treehouse Matte Clear. And I sprayed that over it and it helps lock it all on there, seals it up. And now I gotta go back and start 
finishing it now that I fixed my mistakes I gotta go back and try and finish it so that's what the rest of the build is gonna be we're gonna finish it up so let me uh, reposition the camera and whatnot and get to painting I probably won't talk much while I'm painting so it'll be kind of quiet if I have a note to say or something I may say it I may just put it as notes in the bottom of the screen and I'll try to give you some kind of sweet music to tickle your ears while you boringly watch me paint I'll put up what I'm I'll try to put up notes of what I'm doing so anyway let me get to that and uh, we'll see about wrapping this video up and we'll have a completed model when we're all done I painted them um, this layer brown which is chocolate brown and it's just a regular craft paint like I said before um, then I wanted to do a dark wash to kind of accentuate the uh, you know the grain in the wood help to make it stand out more and as you can see this one's been washed has a dark wash and you can probably see it where it, it's, it's darker now because I messed up and that's the lighter color that's before the wash before the wash after the wash thing is is I mixed up a wash and what I did put that there is I picked up the brown <clears throat> but I picked up the wrong brown too much stuff on the desk and I end up using this darker espresso and I should have just thinned this down and probably used this and it would have looked pretty good and I, what I did is I mixed a little bit of black into it just regular old black and then I thinned it with the washer fluid and you just work thin it down to what is you're comfortable with what's thinner because you just kind of brush it on you let it sit a little just a short little while and then you just take an old piece of sock or something and dab it and and leave it so it sets down in the low spots and you try to wipe off the excess off the high spots <clears throat> so <clears throat> I don't know I'm happy with it though even though it's darker now um, it's kind of a happy mistake and I already did the cross bars that go in between these like that so now we're going to do the other side and I also have the seats I painted the backs the same uh, chocolate brown so everything should match pretty good uh, this will be lighter according to the paint instructions um, but you don't you know whether you want to follow them or not this is supposed to be lighter and then this is the darker just like the main log so all right <clears throat> anyway let me uh I'm just take an old just a kind of a flat brush make sure it's clean and floppy and I just keep my little bottle of water over here to clean the brush later all right so basically this is pretty thin actually it's been sitting here just a little bit starting to thicken up a little um, actually now that it's been sitting here just a little while let me add just a little more cleaner into it and you just kind of you know it doesn't really matter how much it's just whatever your whatever seems to feel right to you Oop. Hopefully that ain't too much. If not, it's just going to be thinner. And I just take me a little, I always keep these little sticks. And mix it up. Just make sure you get it mixed up real good and so it's all consistent. And there, I don't know if you can see. When I hit the bottom, it just it's almost like water running down the side. It's pretty thin, if you can see that. Yeah. Hopefully you can kind of see that. 
know if you can or not. Trying to not get in the way of the camera. So you just kind of runs right down the side, nice and thin. Splattering it everywhere. One thing is always keep paper towels around. And what's nice with the craft paint is it's water based. It cleans up real easy. It's very forgiving. All right, so let's kind of do this. I just kind of lob it on there. Doop doop doop. Yeah, see, you're getting it all over. I should have a paper towel under here, but it might be just a little too thin. But that's okay. Getting it on. This is all messy. If you like to be really neat, you're probably going to get stressed out. I know it stresses me out. I don't like to make a big mess, but yeah, I did thin it out just a little bit too much, but that's okay. Let it sit on here. I just kind of leave it so that it can sit. I try to leave this level. That's a little bit thin. And my paper towel. See that? It just wipes right off. Especially this because it's so thin. Cleans right off real easy. Now I'm going to sit here and just kind of let this dry just a little bit. I may. This is pretty thin. I don't know how fast it's going to dry. And I might have to do a little bit of a time lapse here. But I think you kind of get the idea. You can see where it's how it sort of works. I would like it to be a little bit drier. See, it's still dripping off. A little too thin. Also kind of depends on what you're doing a, a wash on. <clears throat> Might be sometimes you want it thin. Let me see. Take a piece of this and you just sort of kind of lightly hit it yeah it's a little too thin so I'm just kind of feather hitting it I'm not even really pressing down I'm just kind of letting it just lightly the weight of the rag draw drag across it try and get down in some of these spots where you don't want too much Yeah, I might have to hit it again. I'm probably going to let this dry a little and then hit it a second time. So, even the back side here, see. You let it get in one spot and dry too much because you try to I have to do this as a bigger piece in a large in sections so try not to let great big blobs dry anywhere because they're hard to fix later and let that sit we're letting that dry I'm going to get a mess everywhere. Maybe we'll, I'm going to let that sit a little bit open. I've been keeping that covered, but I'm going to let it sit open. Maybe it'll dry up a little bit. These are done. I'm going to set these off to the side. And I got these to do yet. Let me, these could actually be, these are the seats. So they don't have to be these kind of need to match each other so see how this one's probably gonna be right now it's looking like it might be a little bit lighter 
So we'll see, especially under the light there. So we'll see how it dries. I might just have to hit it one more time. It's not looking too bad. Let me see if I can hit the, the seat backs real quick. See, I'll just kind of do this. There we go. This is really like just some bark on the back of the seat. And the, you want to kind of do the, I mean, it's a cartoon, I know, so it's not like it has to be realistic. But, you know, cut wood is usually lighter than the older wood that's been exposed for a while. Or like the bark, if the bark is still on it, which this sort of looks like it might be, the bark will be darker than the wood on the middle. But that's if you just want to, if you're going for a little bit of realism, which is, I know, stupid on this because I'm talking about a cartoon car. At least I think it's a cartoon car. I don't know, maybe there really was one of these on the road. If it is, it's a pretty old car. Probably have to get collector car insurance. That one set just a little. Yeah, it's looking. Yeah, I'm gonna have to let that dry and, and hit it a second time, probably. I use my old socks. They get stretched out or get holes in them. If they've been through the laundry for the last time, I cut them up into these little pieces and they're good for doing this kind of stuff. They make nice little rags. Let's just see. sucks that paint is coming off underneath see yeah mistakes I just painted those earlier so they're probably not dry enough or I should have hit them with the clear again anyway so these are gonna have to go dry so I can redo everything on them totally start over on the seats so that's that's the kibosh on that for the moment and you see that see all this that's the paint it's craft paint coming off that plastic so that's not good so we're gonna that that's gonna get redone later I'm going to let this dry and come back and hit it again and then we'll see how it looks. So let's go set up some other stuff and we'll time out on this. Alrighty, so we got the dark wash finished up. Uh, remember this was lighter. I ended up doing two more coats on top of the first one. Uh, to get it to match pretty good. Uh, I definitely got that washed a little too thin when I thinned it out. So that's all done. That's matching. The uh, two other the seats those turned out pretty nice. Those actually came out closer to the color I was shooting for. Uh, remember the paint came off. I should have hit it with clear again to seal the second coat of paint I put on. I had cleared it before. What I did is instead of painting and clearing it again, I just went ahead and washed what was there. And um, 
again, I couldn't remember what I painted these because I painted them like weeks ago. And um, I'm pretty sure I had painted these a, a different brown. And I think it was the golden brown. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it was. And with the wash, it actually looks pretty nice. I like it. And um, looking at them, they're a different size log than the logs of the main body. They even look a little different as far as the grain on them. Um, so they could probably be a different species of wood. So they would be a different color. They're pretty close. I like them. I think it's going to look all right. Um, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. Um, and, you know, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I think that'll work. So that's done, other than the faces. I'll get back to that. And I started messing around. I went ahead and washed the steering wheel and made it look close to the same color brown. So that matches pretty good. I still got to do something with this. I don't like that. And then I started maybe playing around with the uh, these lashings. And this one here was uh, moccasin brown for the little ties, these little X's. And I thought, yeah, that kind of looked all right. And then I used the moccasin brown on this just to see how it was going to look. And although I want it to be a little subtle and not really stand out, it it's maybe a little too subtle. It almost gets lost with the brown. So I didn't really like that. So I picked up a different color was cocoa. And the cocoa. I used this, tried that out here. And I really like that. I it's not like, you know, bam bam in your face, you know, but it stands out enough. I like that. So what I did is I went and tried it on one of the ties on the front of the roof right here. And on camera it probably looks quite a bit different. Um, but that compared to that, that might be a little bit too much. Now that I've done that, I'm wondering if this isn't a little too bold. And I'm still on the fence if I'm going to keep that and do the rest of them in the moccasin or if I'm gonna go and do them all like this one in the uh, cocoa I kind of like the cocoa it doesn't it, it it stands out on the this canvas part okay and I really like it on here and I'm thinking all the lashing would be the same material because we're going to be so so precise and historic about this, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking about just going with the cocoa on all these lashings. And I think that'll look pretty good. It's that roof kind of, I don't know if you can see there. It stands out enough. I believe that'll work. Otherwise, this other is maybe, maybe a little too bold. I don't know. I guess I'll make that decision. If not, I could always come back and change it later. I mean, those are pretty easy to do because this roof is pretty much done. And we got the dash. This is this piece, the floorboard, is basically done. Um, I don't know if I might try and do a little bit of a a white, a lighter color dry brush on those little footprints, or just leave it alone. That's kind of unimportant. The dash, I was trying to figure out if this was going to be stone like the dash, the grid, the, I guess this is the radio. So this would probably be like the speaker and these are the controls, I guess the, the probably the volume and the, and the station. So I'm thinking maybe these should be wood, those and that, when maybe I'll put some black down in those slots for the speaker so I think I'm gonna make these like wood pieces 
And I forgot about these. These are the uprights, the poles that hold the dash in. So I guess these are the dash mount. So I need to paint those probably to match these as close as I can. I do still have my wash left over here. Um, it still hasn't dried. Uh, I've been keeping it on my bench basically all week. And I've just been keeping this old pudding cup, which I use a lot of these. Um, and it's clean. I licked all the pudding out of it, so it's clean now. Um, and I just keep that on top, and it's been keeping it from drying completely out. Um, just stir it back up a little bit, so that's been working out okay. That's been, uh, let's see. Remember when I did this and decided to let it sit? That was about six days ago, five, six days ago. And I just last night got back onto this to do this. So it's been sitting on my bench all week and uh, being ignored. And that wash has been sitting here with that pudding cup on top of it. And I'm really surprised it didn't totally dry up, but I guess the cup is keeping the air out of it. So just goes to know if you got one of those little mixing cups, you can keep it covered for. It might even go another, another week. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try and finish it here today. Use it. All I got left are these two little poles here, so we'll get that done. And other than that, oh, the seats. We've got these to do in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna maybe drive, try and dry brush on the on the tip of the brush to darken these lines a little bit with a darker color and then do a whole overall dry brush to lighten it up so and try and keep them about this color though but I'd like to get these lines to maybe stand out a little more we'll see so that I'm gonna do and these are basically done other than painting these lashings and then after everything's done see I gotta paint the steering wheel cover or the, the grip uh, I did that in another color when I first started this. I kind of think I'm going to go with the same color that I use on the lashings, which would be the cocoa, and do that in cocoa. Um, then once everything's painted, I'm going to clear coat everything again. That's the thing that happened with that seat. I painted over what would already been clear coated, and I didn't clear coat it again. And being water base and using the washer fluid to thin it, you know, which you would use water to thin it, it helped remove the paint, especially when it was only about a day old. So the trick really with the with the water based acrylic craft paints would be to, if you're going to do a wash, like we did here, to you know a black wash or a dark wash, uh, would be to before you do that. Uh, go ahead and seal it with some kind of a clear, a clear acrylic and then that way it, it'll lock it down and you're not going to be washing it back off again <clears throat> and even after doing this stuff for years you, you still do stupid mistakes like that you get in a hurry or think you can get away with it and you know, what does it do it jumps up and bites you in the butt again so let's get busy finishing up the painting on this stuff and um Probably once we get done with that, then we'll start doing assembly and and get this bad boy finished and on a road. Go for a ride. Maybe we'll go out and get a go to Coney Island and get a hot dog or something. Alright, so I'm gonna get busy painting. I'm gonna shut up, get to work. Maybe I'll throw some music on here for you. Will Skip finally shut his pie hole and get the painting done? Will he finish this model? or let it languish on his workbench for several months or years? Will Earl have to finish this model for him? For answers to these questions, and maybe some that weren't asked, come back for video number two and maybe number three. After all, it's only 30 minutes of your life you'll never get back. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and thanks for watching.